The reigning World Series champions, the Atlanta Braves, acquired all-star first baseman Matt Olson in a blockbuster trade. Today, I'll be going over the players involved and what it all means, because even though the Braves have picked up a star player, this means goodbye to a franchise icon. Welcome to Pastime. Matt Olson emerged as a star player with the Oakland Athletics, and any team in the league would be lucky to have him. He's a complete hitter, a two-time gold glove winner at first base, and he's right in the prime of his career. He was reportedly sought after by the Yankees and the Padres this offseason, but the Braves are the ones who offered the right prospects to make the trade. Coming off of an unlikely World Series victory, the Braves are hoping to keep that magic alive, while the A's, on the other hand, are now tearing it all down to rebuild the roster. But this is one of the most talked about trades in recent memory, and it doesn't have to do with any of the players that were exchanged. It's because when this trade went down, there was someone on the free agent market who was available to every team in the league. He played first base with the Atlanta Braves for 11 years and became universally beloved, not to mention leading the team to a championship. Freddie Freeman was the definition of a franchise player. But his time in Atlanta has come to a close, and this trade for Matt Olson is what sealed the deal. And even though they weren't traded for each other, I want to compare how Olsen and Freeman both performed back last season, just to show what this means for the Braves lineup. On this graph, we have every hitter who played in 2021 represented as a dot. The further to the right the player is, the more that they played, and the higher up they are, the more valuable they were in that category. This graph illustrates batting average, and here are Olsen and Freeman compared to the rest of the league. Both of them played nearly every game last season, so we have a great sample to look at here. We can see that Freeman has a better feel for pure contact, while Olsen is still above average in this department. But we'll see in a second how this doesn't quite tell the full story of who they are as players. Next, a look at on-base percentage, which takes that batting average and adds on the ability to draw walks. Here we can see how players like Juan Soto and Bryce Harper really separate themselves from the rest of the pack, which is all thanks to their elite plate discipline. But focusing back on Olsen and Freeman, while they're not quite on that level, they're still among the best. These two ended up with a very similar walk rate to each other, so Freeman's on-base percentage stays ahead of Olsen here thanks to that contact ability that we saw in the batting average. But moving to slugging percentage, which demonstrates hitting for power and extra base hits, things get moved around a bit. This is where Olsen has an advantage, especially after hitting 39 home runs last season compared to the 31 that Freeman hit. So while Freeman was a better pure contact hitter, Olsen did more damage with the contact that he got, which allows him to take the lead here. Finally, we'll take a look at an all-encompassing stat to look beyond just their offensive production. This is Fangraph's version of wins above replacement, also known as F-War, which evaluates a player's hitting, fielding, and base running to estimate the complete value of a player's performance. Here we see that these two still remain pretty close. Olsen's better defensive metrics help him out here, but honestly, this difference isn't super significant. The same thing is seen when looking at Baseball Reference's version of War as well. To sum it all up, the main takeaway is that Freeman has better contact ability, while Olsen has better power and defense. But the thing is, comparing Olsen and Freeman this past offseason wasn't really about how they performed on the field. It mainly came down to their age and their contract situations. Freddie Freeman ended up signing a six-year deal with the Dodgers for $162 million, which will take him through his age 37 season. Now, we don't know if the Braves would have offered a contract like this to Freeman, and there's so many factors at play when it comes to contract numbers, but this is what we know for the sake of comparison. Matt Olson, on the other hand, had two years of arbitration left in Oakland before he became a free agent for an estimated total around $30 million. So the Braves more or less had a choice here. You can trade away some top prospects to get the younger guy on a cheaper, shorter deal, or you can keep your face of the franchise and pay him full market value as he reaches the end of his career. And they went with a young guy. And the next day, they followed that up with a huge extension for eight years and $168 million. So, for the cost of four prospects, the Braves locked down a younger, arguably better first baseman for two additional years for almost the same amount of total money that Freeman is getting. Plus, when you think about the ages of Ronald Acuna Jr., Ozzie Albies, Austin Riley, and Max Freed, well, Maddelson fits right in, and this could make the Braves competitive for even longer. But thinking about salaries and competitive windows, that doesn't really pull at the heartstrings when it means you're parting ways with a fan favorite. 
Even though everything about this trade and the extension looks great on paper, it can't help but feel a little bittersweet. But now, let's take a look at what Oakland got in return for those two years of Matt Olson. For this section, I'll be showing some scouting grades courtesy of Fangraphs and MLB Pipeline. They use something called the 20 to 80 scale to evaluate prospects, which grades out various skills of a player. But it's really quite simple. You can think of them like attribute ratings in a video game. It goes from 20, which is poor, to 50, which is average, up to 80, which is best of the best. These grades from these evaluators are projections of how these players might perform once they reach the major leagues, and they're a good way to understand how the prospect is currently valued. We'll start with Christian Pache, 23-year-old center fielder, expected in the majors this year. His calling card is his center field defense, and he is already among the greatest fielders in the entire league at any position. Now, there are big questions about his offensive potential, but playing on a rebuilding team in Oakland should give him more time to work that out. Shea Langoliers, 24-year-old catcher, estimated to start seeing major league action sometime this year or the next. He's scouted as a talented defensive catcher with a very good throwing arm behind the plate. His biggest struggle offensively is with swing and miss, but he still has a good shot at becoming an everyday catcher. Ryan Cusick and Joey Estes, right-handed pitchers who may see the majors in two to three years. Both of these guys have the potential to be starters in the majors one day, but they both carry pretty strong risk of becoming relievers. Cusick is the more exciting of the two, a former first round draft pick who can hit triple digits with his fastball. This trade, of course, is part of a bigger picture for the Oakland A's. First, it was all-star starting pitcher Chris Bassett traded to the Mets. Then, all-star first baseman Matt Olson to the Braves. Then, all-star third baseman Matt Chapman to the Blue Jays. Then, starting pitcher Sean Manaya to the Padres. And now, it just leaves starting pitcher Frankie Montas on the trade block. This is nothing short of a fire sale. The front office is burning down the roster to stock up on prospects and save a bunch of money. And it's a sad breakup for a great group of players that struggled to make an impact in the American League. The Houston Astros, for the most part, have dominated the division for the last four years, and it's clear that Oakland is giving up the fight. So on both sides of the equation, this trade can deliver some heartbreak, but for very different reasons. Honestly, Atlanta fans almost seem spoiled to be going from one all-star first baseman to another after literally winning the World Series, especially when you compare it to Oakland fans, who have to watch each of their stars get traded away one by one amidst even worse rumors that the team might be relocated to Las Vegas. But now, we watch how it unfolds. Only time will tell if Matt Olson can help the Braves continue their run of success, or if the A's will be successful with their rebuild. And it'd be no surprise if Freddie Freeman can win another championship, but this time wearing Dodger blue. This is a big shakeup, and there will be many ramifications for years to come. I want to thank Fangraphs, The Athletic, MLB Pipeline, and Baseball Prospectus for their prospect coverage. I want to thank Fangraphs and Baseball Reference for their data, and Tableau for data visualization. This is my first foray into this type of content, so I'd really appreciate any and all feedback you have down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching.